In the last video, you saw the formation of hydrates and hemiacetals from the reaction of ketones or aldehydes with water or alcohols, respectively. Hydrates and hemiacetals are formed in small quantities under any conditions, neutral, acidic, or basic. However, under acidic and only acidic conditions, the reaction between a ketone or aldehyde and an alcohol goes further. It produces an acetal. Let's examine how this works. As you saw in the last video, when acetone reacts with methanol under acidic conditions, a hemiacetal is formed in a reversible reaction that favors the starting materials. But the hemiacetal doesn't have to go back to the starting materials. Let's do a quick homo-lumo analysis to see what else might happen. What's the homo of this hemiacetal? There are four sp3 hybridized oxygen lone pairs. Any of them could be a decent donor orbital, and under acidic conditions, there are H plus sources around, such as protonated methanol, which offer good acceptor orbitals, sigma star OH with a positive charge. If one of the lone pairs on the OH is protonated, it becomes a pretty good leaving group, and the lone pair on the adjacent oxygen can swing down to kick out water. Let's look at this step from a molecular orbital perspective. It's just like the lone pair push we've seen before in nucleophilic acyl substitution. A lone pair on an sp3 hybridized oxygen donates into an adjacent sigma star CO. That sigma star orbital is a very good acceptor orbital because it has been given a positive charge by being protonated. The result is this compound, which is a very good electrophile with a positive charge on a CO pi star orbital. Another molecule of methanol, which is probably the solvent, so there's lots of it around, can use its lone pair to attack the carbon, making this species. If the solvent removes its acidic proton, we're left with a neutral molecule that has two OR groups, both attached to the same sp3 hybridized carbon. This is an acetal. Perhaps now you can see why we give hemiacetals their names. They are the halfway point in the formation of acetals. So why can acetals be formed only under acidic conditions? It's this key step which turns the oxygen that was originally part of the carbonyl group into a good leaving group that can only be done by protonating it. At the risk of sounding like a broken record, unfortunately, this overall reaction is typically not favorable. Its equilibrium constant is usually slightly less than one. But there's a very helpful tool that allows us to manipulate this equilibrium. Le Chatelier's principle. If we add a lot of the alcohol, for instance, by using it as solvent, and remove water from the products, perhaps by using a drying agent, like you've done in lab, we can force the equilibrium to the right, and therefore usually isolate acetals in pretty good yield. Acetals are found in some natural products, such as oligosaccharides like sucrose and lactose, as well as other biologically important compounds like pheromones. They are unreactive under basic or neutral conditions, but can be hydrolyzed back to the ketone or aldehyde they came from with water and an acid catalyst. Hydrolysis is just the reverse of the reaction we described earlier in this video. Because acetals don't react with bases or nucleophiles, they can be used as protecting groups for ketones and aldehydes. You can read more about this role at the bottom of page 228 in your, note, in your textbook.